Welcome to a composites video from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. In this video, we are going to degas some epoxy that we will later use in another video for vacuum resin infusion. I wanted to create a video showing the degassing of epoxy before you use the epoxy for vacuum resin infusion. To do that, I made a vacuum jar made out of glass so we could film the degassing through the side of the jar. With the timer starting here at zero, I began pulling a vacuum in the vacuum jar. The bubbles that you can see in the epoxy were introduced when the epoxy was being mixed, when the resin and the hardener were being mixed together. Now the more vigorous that you mix the epoxy, the more bubbles you're going to introduce. So if you're slow and gentle with it, you introduce fewer bubbles, but of course it takes longer to mix too. As the vacuum gets greater and greater in this vacuum jar, those bubbles are going to get larger and larger. And the reason for that is the lower the pressure is in there, the more that those bubbles can expand out in the resin. And the larger those bubbles get, the faster that they will rise up in the resin. In the upper right hand corner, you can see a comparison of where we started to where we are right now. So we've really expanded those bubbles quite a bit. At the bottom of the cup, you're just beginning to see that the bubbles are starting to thin out. They're rising up and starting to thin out at the bottom. Well, since it took about 25 minutes to degas this resin, let's speed it up by about a factor of eight and see if we can get through this a little bit faster. Let's talk a little bit about the epoxy that we are degassing here. The brand is ProSET, which is P-R-O-S-E-T. I bought this from the composite supply company, Composite Envisions. The epoxy is INF-114, that's its model number. And the hardener I'm using is a medium hardener. It is INF-211. This epoxy is designed to be used for vacuum infusion. So it's a fairly low viscosity epoxy. And of course you can reduce the epoxy viscosity by increasing the temperature. And for this particular test, we're running at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point in the degassing, you can see that we've removed almost all of the air that we started with. And I noticed watching this video, something odd was happening. Down at the bottom, and I presume in the rest of the epoxy, we keep getting new small air bubbles coming up. And I'm not quite certain where those are coming from. It would seem to be that these are some volatiles with a low vapor pressure. If I'm right about that, these bubbles are coming from one of two things. Either the cup that I'm using is outgassing some volatiles from the plastic, or the epoxy itself has some low vapor pressure volatiles in them and those are outgassing. It would be worth doing another test where I do a degassing of the cup by itself for 25 minutes or so, and then degas the epoxy and see if we can see a little bit difference in these later stage bubbles. And by the way, it really should not take 25 minutes to degas this epoxy. It should be done much faster than that. And one of the reasons it's taking so long is the vacuum pump that I have can only pull a vacuum of 25 and a half inches of mercury. And I really need to get down much farther than that. At the altitude that I'm at, I should be able to pull at least 28 and a half going to a near full vacuum. So I'm gonna to have to look around and see if I can find a vacuum pump that'll do a better job they can get me closer to 27 and a half or 28 inches of mercury of vacuum pressure. I should point out that the amount of time it took to pull out the bubbles that were put in during the mixing process, that only took about five minutes for those bubbles to degas. All these little bubbles we're looking at, you could probably ignore and just go ahead and use the epoxy after just the initial five minutes of degassing. Let's slow this back down to normal speed. I'm getting ready to release the vacuum in this vacuum jar 
And as the vacuum starting decreases, air is coming into the vacuum jar, it's interesting that you can see, for example, this big bubble up here on the upper right, it starts to begin to shrink. And in particular, the bubbles that you see within the epoxy, those small bubbles, they just almost disappear. They shrink down to almost nothing. At this point, we have pretty much degassed our epoxy. It's not completely degassed because as you could have seen, there were small bubbles still being generated, but it's far enough along now that I'm ready to use it to infuse into a part. Let's compare it to where we started. As you can see up in the upper right hand corner where we started, there were far more air bubbles suspended in the epoxy when we started, and now all those air bubbles are gone. I'm pulling this cup of epoxy out of this jar so you can get a clear view of the epoxy without the glass distortion. And it's looking pretty good. Here's another view of the epoxy here at the end as I'm pulling it out of the jar. And just to show you what temperatures that we are dealing with here, the room temperature was 73 degrees Fahrenheit and the temperature of the epoxy had reached about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't take this video to be a recommendation on how to degas epoxy. I would never recommend using a glass vacuum jar. It's just too prone to breaking. But I wanted to give a fairly good view from the side of what degassing epoxy looks like. I well, hope you enjoyed this video. It's a lot of fun to make. If you want to see some more of these types of videos and some design videos and construction videos, then subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell symbol and you get notified whenever I upload a new video. If you've made it this far in the video, I've got a little bonus for you. I decided to go ahead and run a little experiment where I would put one of these cups empty in the vacuum chamber and run it for about 30 minutes at the full vacuum. And then I would put equal amounts of epoxy in this pre-vacuumed container and one that had not been vacuumed. I would then put them both in vacuum chamber, degas the epoxy, and see if I can see a difference in the low volatiles that are generating bubbles after around 20 minutes or so. And what you're looking at here is a video at around the 20 minute mark sped up by a factor of eight. And it's difficult to see because the one on the left has a little bit of a black background and it's a little easier to see the bubbles in it. But it looks to me like the bubbles are in the same in both the pre vac container and the one that was not vac So it looks like the uh, plastic in these little mixing cups I'm using aren't a factor in the degassing of the epoxy.